Hello and what is going on today guys, Tomcat here and welcome back to Forza Horizon 4 and in this video I am going to be showing you guys how to build a Dodge Charger Hellcat drag car. Now this is going to be primarily a highway car, highway drag car, although it will work at the drag strip as well. Um, the in-game virtual dyno claims that this car will do 0-60 to 60 in 1.3 seconds, however that is considering absolutely perfect conditions and an absolutely perfect launch every single time, which isn't always going to happen. The consistent launch for this car, uh, or I should say consistent 0-60 to 60 time that I have personally timed and recorded with this car is between 1.6 and 1.8 seconds, which is still very, very, very fast. And that's why I say 1.3 seconds with quotation marks, because in theory, if you got it 100% perfect, it would be 1.3 seconds. Realistically, it's usually going to end up being uh, 1.6 to 1.8 seconds so let me go ahead and demonstrate a launch real quick and i'll also i'll also be going over how to do this type of launch um with you guys in another video now that's what happens if you mess it up so this is a little bit lower than where i want to launch i want to launch it at right about 5,000, i think not try so right about here and eh, that's like 50 5600 RPM. And three, two, one, go. Spun a little too much and I shifted too early. But that kind of, that was right at the top end of where, like we're all right over the top end of where you want to launch. Maybe a little bit lower. No, stop. <laughs> Oh, that's first gear. I was like, why the hell did it do a burnout? That's first gear. All right. Second gear. 5,000 RPM. Let's go. Pulls away perfectly clean and doesn't slip the clutch all that badly. Now, that will, that will pull on a lot of other rear-wheel drive cars off of a launch. If you're doing rear-wheel drive only drag racing, um, then this car is definitely going to do fairly well for you. Now, I will say, if you're up against all-wheel drive cars, yes, there are some cars that will smoke this thing. But, but if you're doing rear-wheel drive only, especially if it's restricted to American cars and American muscle cars, this thing is definitely up there with some of the, uh, some of the faster cars, if not some of the fastest off the line. Now, I'm going to show you guys the exact process I took of building this thing, as well as go over the tune, so you guys can actually not only, not only replicate it, because, see, that's the thing. I feel like some people would say, well, if you want to replicate the tune, why not just share it? Well, what I want you guys to be able to do is I want to show you guys what I did, and then I want you guys to be able to build upon that within the car that you actually want, not necessarily just driving mine, and I don't want it to be locked off for you. So the tune setup itself is actually, I just realized I completely forgot to set up the tire pressure on this car, which honestly, now, now it claims 1.2 seconds. So now we're going to have to go and try that launch again. But here's my gearing, and the gearing is key because my, my actual final drive is like a 2.35. It's super, super long. However, my second gear, I made it just a little bit shorter, and I left fourth, or fourth, first gear alone because I, I never use it. For, first gear is, I don't know why I keep trying to say fourth, but first gear is basically pointless with this setup. I just, just use second gear to take care of everything. As far as alignment goes, I have all the camber dialed out. Um, you, could, you could have it in the front if you really wanted to, because in the front it's not really going to matter on a rear-wheel drive drag car. Um, you want to get all the rear stick that you can. Um, sway bars I have fully soft front and rear springs are a little softer in the rear than they are in the front they're very they're very soft on on both sides though um, the ride height is fully slammed however the car naturally sits um, naturally sits lower in the front than it does in the rear so that's why I was okay with doing it that way if the car sat level, I would make the rear end just a little bit higher, but make it softer so it has room to squat down on the launch. Now, dampening-wise, the rear is is fairly soft. Again, it's also um, not quite as as soft 
as well sorry it's softer than the front the front is always going to be the stiffer stiffer end on these drag cars um the arrow is untuned basically because there's really nothing to tune um the brakes i've left alone and the diff is 100 percent on acceleration now that's pretty much the basics of setting this car up there's not really there's not really anything super complicated about setting this car up um what's more what's Honestly, take what honestly takes a little bit more time is learning how to launch it and learning how the car likes to be launched. Once you get it off the line cleanly and you know how to get it off the line cleanly and consistently, that's when you can really start using the car to its full potential. So let's go into the custom upgrades area and I'll show you guys what all has been done. Um, basically, in the engine, everything is race. Everything is maxed. There's nothing in here that hasn't been touched. And I know some of you guys saw this build on the live stream recently and one of the live streams that I did, uh, actually I drag raced with you guys on the highway and what this was one of the cars that I built on stream so if you saw this car on stream you definitely know it fairly well already although I did not um, I did not tune the tire pressure on stream so I'm very curious to see what this car does now with the tuned tire pressure and you can see like I said everything is race um, and that left us with a final power figure of 1047 horsepower and 901 foot-pounds of torque weighing in at 3500 pounds which again that's also after a full race weight reduction because we're running, you know, race brakes, race suspension. We need the race sway bars in order to tune them fully soft. And as you can see, we are on the race weight reduction. If this car was full weight, it would weigh 4,500 pounds. So we're literally a thousand pounds down from factory, which is insane. Drivetrain is going to be full race, obviously. Nothing is left untouched here. The reason why there's nothing left untouched is because, number one, we need the tunability, and also for the driveline, we need the carbon fiber stuff for the reduced weight. Now, tire setup, this is actually kind of interesting because so it's drag tires, obviously, but the front tire width, I left it alone. You don't need to do anything with it. The rear tire width, however, is maxed at a 355, and as you can see, the entire tire really is on the ground because that's what you want for that full straight line contact patch now if you were building a say for example a circuit focused car then you would obviously want the camber there because when the car turns in and leans over it won't be able to fully take advantage of the tire unless you have some negative camber so wheels just in case you don't know what wheels those are and you want to know they are the the Weld Racing Alumistar bead locks. I actually kind of want to change the color of them just a little bit, but this isn't a customization video. This is a setup video. So again, the and also the, the, the wheel size is completely stock. Aero is obviously stock. And conversion-wise, I haven't done anything. I would love to be able to strap turbos on this car. I feel like that would be a really interesting improvement. But at the same time, I'm like I'm kind of concerned about doing it because I don't know. I don't know if it would be the best. I don't know. I I don't know if it would be the best for the car, but part of me says it would be it would be amazing. So real quick, well, you know what? Instead of trying to launch it here, let's just go back to the highway and launch it there because that's what this thing is designed for, really. There's really no other environment that I drag race in more than the highway. I set up my drag cars for the highway, not the drag strip. I rarely ever go to the drag strip as well. I'm not sure why. But let's go ahead and try this again. That's 5,000 RPM. Now with the lower tire pressure, it's telling us the game says 1.2 seconds. So let's go. We're going to have to launch it really high because otherwise it's going to bog. Yeah, it, it's going to bog and slip the clutch. I don't know if that's the fastest way, because I know it's spun just a little bit, so I'm thinking the sweet spot for this launch is going to be somewhere in the, like, in, like, the 5,500 RPM range. And the thing is, with this race flywheel, the RPMs move so quickly that it's kind of tricky to catch it with the launch control. It's actually super tricky to catch it with the launch control. I don't know why it's falling. God, it's so squatted. It's trying to like, it's trying to bury the tire into the pavement. That's crazy. It's definitely a dig beast. 
That's for sure. I'm going to try one more time. and I Well, I really want to try to get that launch timing right because if I can dial in those RPMs, dude, this thing would be, this thing would be on point. That might be right about it. Let me look at this. Look at that. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That is insane. It is in the ground. Dude. Holy crap. That is that is probably the most squatted ch uh, Charger Hellcat I have ever seen in Horizon 4. That is that is amazing. I love it. I absolutely love it. Look at that squat. That is insane. That is properly that, that is that is properly thick. I'll tell you what. That is that is properly thick. But you know what? I want to try a couple more launches because I really want to find the exact right RPM to launch at. Oh, and there we go. <laughs> I tried to spin it going the other way and it was just like no. Oh, it's raining now. I'm surprised by that. Like, all I did was I didn't push in the clutch or anything. I didn't use the launch control. Literally, all I did was I put it in second gear and just floored it, and it actually pulled away really well. Watch this. That works pretty well, but I don't know if that's faster or slower than... I feel like the launch control is just a tad faster. Just a tad faster. But if you guys enjoyed that video, it's sort of it was sort of half build video and then half tutorial video on how to get a uh, on how to get a Charger Hellcat to go from 0 to 60 in in perfect conditions 1.2 seconds and in normal conditions 1.6 to 1.8 seconds then make sure you let me know in the comment section below that you enjoyed the video also let me know you enjoyed it by leaving a like subscribe for more videos like this one i'll see you guys next time and also let me know if you would like me to build any other drag cars or if there are any explanations or tutorials that you guys would like regarding drag racing or drifting or anything else in forza horizon 4 i will see you guys next time talk to y'all later and also make sure you have your notifications on so you get notified not only when i post a video but also when i stream because i stream about uh, three times a week, give or take, along with two videos a day.